Today I wanted to talk about the Portuguese media and how corrupt it is and left-leaning pretty much ever since we became a so-called democracy 44 years ago but it got much much worse especially in 2005 when José Socrates was elected Prime Minister with a majority in, um, in government and with this majority he was able to do whatever he wanted yeah. Yeah. and so in 2005 it started a campaign to pretty much control everything from the media to the justice system but I'll leave that to another video and the media was controlled in several ways one of them was essentially making sure that people of the trust of José Socrates and the Socialist Party would be infiltrated in media outlets for example the national national news agency in Portugal is called Lusa and they, they are as left-leaning as they can be I mean it's literally every single day government propaganda and this reached a point where everything that the government did and especially José Socrates which was already receiving accusations of corruption and criminal affairs but the media was not being allowed to talk about it or they would talk about it only as mildly as they could you know they still had to report what was happening otherwise it would be even more scandalous than it was already but they would not say much about it and the second way that the media was controlled was by influencing the regulatory institutions in Portugal we have several regulatory institutions one for each market and one of the markets is of course the media and this regulatory institution for the media was <laughs> so this uh, regulatory institution for the media was essentially infiltrated by the socialists and the socialists uh, would you know attack the journalists for just talking about the crimes of José Socrates certain pl publications were even prevented from talking about it uh, for a period of time and this is quite scandalous but in Portugal people don't really care about anything they only want their state subsidy at the end of the month and who cares about everything else anyway uh, the narrative that the country was amazing because of the fantastic government the socialist government continued even though in 2009 when we had new elections uh, we saw or we already knew that the com country was nearly bankrupt and this still didn't phase 
the Portuguese people not to vote for the socialists because they still won in 2009 only this time with a minority government of course the fact that Jose Socrates raised the wages of the public servants in 2009 before the elections helped in the process because as I already mentioned the public servants and the pensioners in Portugal they are pretty much first-rate citizens especially the public servants because they have they have all sorts of uh, advantages that no one else in the labor market have like having less hours to work during the week they have higher pay higher average pay and higher minimum pay it's quite unbelievable they also have much better uh, pre-retirement conditions because if you if you retire earlier you have you have uh, penalties for doing so not the public servants they can retire early or earlier than everyone else in the private sector and still have no penalties so they give them more money the public servants obviously voted for them enough at least to give them a minority government and no other party because in Portugal everyone is pretty much left except that tiny center party but still the center left and the center are much more responsible than the socialists or the far left and so no one stopped them they won the elections they have the minority government now they just need to negotiate while they are government something that obviously the socialists did not do in 2015 but anyway I'll get to that uh, in 2009 everything was already quite horrible but the socialists continued and indebted the country even more and in 2011 we were nearly bankrupt and we had to request a financial aid to the IMF and uh, European Commission and the Central European Bank 